Good morning, afternoon, wherever you are. We're excited to be here today. Hey, guys, thanks so much for uh, jumping in in 30 minutes and spending some time with me. Um, we are going to jump into taking territory teams, what that means, and ultimately what you're going to learn from the class. But I want to just teach you and give you guys some values and things that have been impactful so far this year for me. Um, so I'm really excited. I'm going to jump in because I've got a lot of action-packed stuff that I want to give to you guys today. So let's, let's go in and do it. All right. So it's nothing about me. You guys don't care about that. So let's jump in here. All right. One thing that I've been really passionate about this year is having people understand that over the last 30 years, goals have been um, ubiquitous. Now, I mean, my kindergartner is setting goals. Now, goals are really important. They, um, they are, get our thinking in a certain way. They are designed to, I like to think of it, Ray Dalio says it best in his book, uh, goals are material things are the bait that gets us to take action to things. But goals are everywhere. And I really think goals are cheap now. I think they are. I think people have been, every self-help book, every organization, every, every uh, class you go to, it's all about goals, 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 great vision boards. All those things are impactful. Remember 30 years ago, we never had any of those things. Now they're everywhere, which is awesome. But now people are throwing goals out like literally like it's candy and really where people are failing now is an execution so the new goal is execution so we can have our goals which is the first step but everybody listening to this the 300 plus people that are on here that are listening you guys already have goals. You're in an organization that fosters this. You're probably spreading it to everybody else. Where you, where we all need help is in this execution. That's where people are failing. If you look at my wall, I have four words, execution, grit, hustle, and limitless, and it starts in that order because if you can't execute, you don't need grit or hustle because you're not even executing, but in order to execute, you will need grit, you'll need hustle, and then ultimately, if you combine all three of those, you get to have a limitless life, which is what people want. So when you're taking territory, or teams and you're building a team building a business these principles that you'll learn throughout the course are all designed to get you executing on these things by the way it's a mindset for execution it doesn't matter if it's a goal physically spiritually business wise execution is where we're failing so we're going to give you models tools and systems that are designed around the execution of these things so we can show up in our day and when we execute we start to get on the right track that's going to give us the freedom that we're ultimately after. So remember, goals are cheap. The new goal is execution for you and for your people, right? How many people have a goal of doubling their income of dum or you know, doubling their pendings per month or an agent on their team that's gonna you know, go from four to eight transactions? But has anything changed, right? Is their execution changed, right? What are they focused on there? So we're it's really gonna break down execution to show what you can do with that to make sure we're accomplishing our goals by executing. So one of the things is I believe that the quality of your life is determined by the quality of not only questions that you have, but problems that continue to show up in your life. Right? So if you have the same problem showing up, it's probably a pattern that you continue to get into that you need to diverge yourself from and push forward with it. So to understand that uh, anybody who owns a business, 96% of businesses fail, right? And that's, that's something that you know, which is crazy to think about. I think about all LLCs, 96% of them fail. So you gotta be crazy in the first place, right? The other thing about when you're building a team, people have the allure that, that leadership are sexy positions and it's glamorous and you just kind of sit in an office and make decisions. Well, let me tell you, with the larger in an organization you get and the more leadership you have, the only thing that comes to you is problems. <laughs> You know, a great example of this right now is Mark Zuckerberg, right? I mean, he literally for the longest time, and now look at his own leadership and investors are suing him, going online to do these things because he wasn't there. I don't know if he even did anything wrong. He was just a leader of the company. Leaderships are not sexy positions. I always like to say it's like if you take an org chart, right, and you put the CEO at the top, you should really flip it around because all the shit flows downhill to you. And that's ultimately because leadership is very taxing on you and you have to make tons of decisions to be able to go through this thing. So just, just remember that as you increase the quality of your problems, it's one of those things that you're doing it, right? And when you go to build a team, right, when you, and I'm going to walk you through three different phases today, but when you go and build a team, understand that when you go from training for a 5K and you want to go run a marathon or an Ironman, does it get easier or harder? The reality is it gets harder. You go run a 5K, the training's minimal, right? You go run a, run a marathon or an Ironman, the training becomes completely different. Well, when you become an individual agent and you want to grow a team, you want to take territory with a team, which is meaning you're providing opportunities and giving um, and taking more uh, market share from people, when you want to build a team, it gets harder before it gets easier. 
So mentally commit to this, that understanding that it is going to be like running a marathon and you go to build a team or take territory team, whether you want to add one person to your team or you want to add a hundred people to your team, it is going to be a mind shift that you need to have. And it's thinking about it from going from a 5k to a marathon. Now the key, what I will tell you is this is you will get much more reward from your Ironman or a marathon than you will from a 5k. Not to say the 5k is not a bad place to start, but you get the point, right? So as you build things it is going to get harder. People, the reason why I put that in there is because people think when they join expansion, it's gotten out there now, it's a little bit different, but when you join expansion, they're like, hey, I'm just going to join an expansion team and money's going to roll up in my bank account. Well, the reality is, is it gets harder when you join a team in the beginning because we're trying to get you out of production and into a business that is actually producing, which is uh, a very challenging thing to do and takes a lot of emotional fitness. So, are you not, hold on, what's that? Uh -oh. Hold on, I'm going to show my screen, make sure you guys can see it. All right. Can you guys see the screen now? I think they can. All right, cool. All right, so um, let me just show you this again. I'll show you these quick, really quickly. So you got the here, goals are cheap, and the goal is execution. You saw that one. You saw that little screen. Now, embrace the suck, right? Entrepreneurship is living a few years of your life like most people won't, so you can spend the rest of your life like most people can't. And I also like to change this around a little bit and say, the people that are able to retire never do, and the people that want to retire never can. And it's the same thing because it's not a, it's a discipline, right? It's a habit that people create. It's a, it's a way of thinking that gets people to be able to, to retire or do these things. And so that's what you got to get yourself involved with, but just embrace the suck as you build a team. If you're going to need this, when you want to take a territory, you're going to build a team, you're going to have to embrace it because there is going to be a lot of sucking that happens. By the way, um, one of the things I'll share with you, if you want extraordinary success for anything you do in your life, extraordinary success comes from mastering the boredom of singular focus equals extraordinary success. Mastering the boredom of singular focus equals extraordinary success. Call it the one thing, right? You're all familiar with that book. But that concept applies to your business, to your social life, to your marriage, to your partnerships, to your physical life, all of those things, it's mastering that boredom is so important. You're going to have to embrace that, right? You wouldn't be a professional golfer and every day wake up and go, hey, you know, I'm going to go shoot some basketball hoops today. I'm going to go throw a football. No, you wake up and you swing a golf club. You putter. You think about golf, right? You're not thinking about mountain biking, right? That's why mastering that boredom of the singular focus gets, equals extraordinary success for it. So let's jump into a little bit about execution. So when I go to ask this question about why are, you know, if goals are everywhere and people aren't executing, well, what stops people from executing? And the fundamentally what stops people from it is, A, it's just not in their calendar, and if it is, you just don't stick to it, right? Or you don't, you want to execute on a goal, you just don't find time. Let me remind all of us that we all have 24 hours in a day, right? So time is not the cheat. It's not, folks. If we all have 24 hours in a day, why do some people accomplish more than others? Why do some people accomplish more by working less hours than other people do? It's not because they're smarter. It's because they're more, they're, they bring much more intensity to each minute. And they're getting into something which I'll share with you in a second, but we all have 24 hours in a day. So I want you to think, and, and just remind yourselves, the next time, stop telling yourself you don't have time. Because that's all you're doing is you're priming yourself to continually think that you actually don't have time. You can find time. In fact, you could quit everything you do, anything else, all your responsibilities, and just go focus on something. You could go lay on a beach, right? You could go, you know, remove all your parent responsibilities and just let your kids go. I mean, some other people do it. I'm, so, I'm, I'm being, you know, I'm exaggerating a lot, but I want you guys to get the point to stop telling ourselves that we don't have time because all we do is have time and time is allows us to geometrically grow our business, right, by focusing on these executions and these particular goals. So what I want you to do, right, for now and to the next the rest of this week, starting today, I want you to start measuring your day in minutes. Most of us are still measuring our days in days, right? We're literally, or we're measuring our week, or we're measuring our life in a week or a month, and we have these monthly goals, and we're kind of measuring this big block. Well, a month is way too long to monitor your days of how you're doing. You have to measure your days in minutes, folks, right? 
People who spend their time doing more profitable work make more money. It's because you're narrowing your focus. I said you before, extraordinary success comes from mastering the boredom of singular focus, which is narrowing your day in minutes, right? What did I do these last two minutes? What am I doing this next 30 minutes? How am I spending the next 30 minutes? What does my calendar look like? Is it jammed packed? Am I investing into the right people? Am I investing into myself? What does your day look like from the minute you wake up, right? Now, I'm not saying you've got to be rigid all the time. If you want two hours of exercise, you find a way to put it into your life. If you want two hours with just to hang out with friends, figure out a way to put that into your life somewhere, but make sure it's in your life so that you're seeing that you're living each aspect of it each day. Um, the other thing to think about, too, is that when you – are able to make time your bitch, right? Meaning that you start controlling time, you actually gain a uh, clarity over it, which gives you the ability and confidence to know that you can start taking on and execute at a higher level because you're saying no to so many other things and you're focusing on a few different things that are there. And so people who spend their time working on high impact projects contribute more to society, we know that, right? People who spend their time creating a flexible career enjoy more freedom. By the way, just by having some freedom in your life, like you know, maybe you block out an hour in the middle of your day for, you can call it freedom time, gives you that ability to say, I can burst in the morning freedom and burst in the afternoon, right? And you can even set your entire week up that way. Depending on how you wanna do it, you're gonna burst, you can get things done. By the way, the other, kind of tactic to this is getting very good at numbers because numbers don't get into the emotional side of conversations and when you ever trying you heard a you know five doesn't jump up and start telling you a story or a result right five is five right and it doesn't talk so you can quickly understand what the score is in a matter of seconds versus a long drawn out emotional thing which is why numbers are very impactful for maximizing people's times right all right so, continuing on measuring your day in minutes. So, whether you want more health, more friendship, more freedom, or more impact, it all comes down time to how you spend your time. It's not going to change, folks. So, what you have to do in order to gain more time, the only way you're going to gain more time is that you have to learn to say yes to only one or two things and no to everything else. And I mean no to everything else. No to the seven birthday party requests that you had for your kids right? No to dinners out. Um, I'm not saying you have to say no to everything. It just, you have to prioritize yourself. I'm speaking for myself to so breathe a little bit when you say this, but these are the, if you study and model after the most successful people that have achieved extraordinary success, what they're most proud of is all the things they said no to and the few things they said yes to. So how do we bring this in for our execution? If you want to grow a team, you're going to have to have such singular focus in measuring your day in moments to maximize your time as you go through each phase in order to execute. You have to be primed with this stuff. So I mean, I'll give you examples. Like you've got to literally, if you have to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, then, you know, at 8.30 comes around, you've got to say no to your favorite TV show or no to late night dinners. Um, and you decide to do a, you know, a Skype call with them. That's it. I'm not saying you've got to change your entire life around, but if there's other things that are more important, you may have to change your life around by things that you're currently saying yes to. Here's the biggest thing is when you study this and you start seeing and you go, well, why don't people execute? Is because they're unwilling to change their current patterns or their current habits that they have in life. Well, you have to understand your current patterns or habits that you have in life have gotten to you exactly where you are. So if you want to make a change, you have to understand you have to change the dynamics of your time. You have to actually change what you're focused on. Right? I was in a coaching session earlier today, and one of my agents uh, from my market center, and literally <laughs> she, uh, she was like, okay, you know, like I, got, I know I need to build this team. I'm going to go out and hire this. And then I said, okay, well, when are you going to do this? And I brought up an example of something she can go do this week. And she goes, I don't have time. I go, well, this is ridiculous because you just told me you absolutely have to master this, but then now you don't have time to go do these things. And she got it. And, 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 she, and she was like, yeah, you're right. And I can hear you. You can hear you know, her saying this to herself of how she doesn't have time to do these things. People are going to help you build a team. That's the only way you build a team is with other people. And people are going to be your greatest asset or your biggest weakness because of the weight that they have. So in order to get really good at bringing on the best people and then leading them is you have to put focus and energy in there, which has to be reflected in your calendar and what you're doing on a daily basis. You have to understand that people that are the most talented people will stay around in your organization because of who you continue to grow and become. 
If you stop growing and stop contributing more to other people and investing into yourself first, which then brings out more value, isn't it, by the way, your duty with your people and your team to make sure you have the best people on your team and you're delivering them the most value, which means that you have to, you have to go out there and add more value to yourself through books, through training, through physical stuff, whatever things you're going to do make you better that just will automatically leak to other people. Well, how does this relate to building a team? Because when you have really great people around you, you have to become somebody different each and every day. It's like Gary Keller changing around Keller Williams. He continually invests so much into himself so he stays ahead of everybody. It's the same thing we need to do. How you do this is by saying yes to one or two things and saying no to everything else. By the way, once you start putting this in play, this will become one of the most powerful things that you'll ever have in your life, the ability to say no. And people will understand it and they'll get it and they'll, they'll understand what you're doing. And um, you may lose a few people along the way because of that because you've always said yes to them. But you need to decide what's more important, right, for you. Is it having freedom in your life? Because that's most important. And you need to get past these phases. But, folks, this is the key here to focusing on execution. So ask yourself this. How much is your calendar worth? Did you make $50,000 last year? Did you make $100,000? I'm not talking about gross in real estate, right? We always tell, I mean, I don't know why even people talk about gross in real estate. Um, you know, $100,000 calendar, a million dollar calendar, which is how much money did you net, right? How much money did you net last year, right? And that's the reflection of the value of what your calendar it looks like, right? That's the value of your calendar. And if you even take it one step further, if you look at your five closest people that you hang out with, not necessarily at work, but you hang out with and socialize with, plus or minus five or ten percent, you're making about the same amount of money they are. So if you want to increase your the amount of money that you make, which I'm sure you all do, which is why you're on this call, and build a bigger team, you have to model after what people are doing, and those people are executing faster. They're executing more efficiently and they're executing quicker. And it's because they're spending more time on those particular key things that are going to drive forward their business. So do you have a $100,000 calendar or a million dollar calendar or a $4 million calendar? What kind of calendar do you want? Make sure it reflects it today. Make those changes of what you're going to do differently to execute, folks. That is going to be the key thing here. As you build a company, as you build a team for taking territory, because really what that means is when you take territory, it means you're gaining more market share, you're doing more pendings, more listings, more people, more opportunities. That's really what it reflects. You need what's called a platform. And so how you go through this is, and this is just a quick 30-second example of this, is when you start when you're the red line, your company won, you notice that if you look at money, you're making more money as an individual agent in the beginning because you're living off all your own energy and income. You have minimal expenses associated with that. It's not until you start adding more people in, investing back into platform systems and failing forward, and I mean failing forward, which means losing money, right? That's failing forward. And you start going through what's just called this grind. And it is a grind. And this is not just for real estate. This is for any business. But if you want to hit your geometric curve, you've got to earn your right through your grind. It's the only way you're going to be able to do it, right? Unless you hit a lottery winner, which many are going to become bankrupt in seven years anyways. And so when you do this, it's the grind of five to seven years. And I'm going to walk you through a couple of phases, particularly in real estate, how you do this. But I just want you guys to see, this is what it looks like. It's not a month, right? I had an OP email me over the weekend and asked me some advice with an expansion agent. He says he wants to work five hours a week and you know, get back into real estate and do this expansion thing. And I just said, well, look, there's no way in hell he's going to be able to do this five hours a week. In fact, he's going to have to work like 60 hours a week if he wants to start from there and build some expansion. So you probably shouldn't get involved with it. And it's because it's going, you, it's, these things aren't, they're simple, but they're hard and they take energy and time, folks. It's going to look like that. Otherwise, your company too, which stays flat, which most of us just ride the wave of the market. The market's up, we're up. If the market's down, we're down. But plus or minus, we stay within 10% of where our net income is every single year because we're not investing into the right people, the right systems for it. All right. So let me just give you a quick snapshot of what taking, when you have a team, ultimately what I want it to look like from a, um, a path to freedom, if you will, it's you as the chairman of the board, right? And then you may have your executive assistant or your own like legal team, executive assistant. You may have you know a couple other people on that side that are just protecting you. 
chief of staff, whatever it is for you. And then you have your director of sales or CEO. Right? Think of this from a team leader model, like from a uh, market center, right? And then you're going to have your director of listings, which is your lead listing agent, your director of ops, and your director of buyers, or your lead buyer agent, buyer's agent. Now, remember, this is a model, so you may have a couple different things here. But you may have four listing agents underneath your director of listings. You may have seven operations people underneath there. You may have 30 buyer agents underneath there in order to accomplish your goals. But your key people, people you're pouring into, are these, right? And then you may have an expansionist that, you know, director of expansion that's underneath your CEO, right? But ultimately, there should be one layer of these things because you're only going to be able to pour into about four or five of these people ultimately for it. So just a quick snapshot of what it looks like of what you're getting towards. So let me quickly go over this, um, this phase, if you will. Phase one, so this is the, and this is a whole series, but briefly to understand what a real estate agent, and really this can be used for any principles. I, I put this down for our own CEOs who partner with us, but you have to go through three different phases to get out of production and to have a massive team. And I'm not saying that's everyone's, um, what their goal is, but I bet everybody would like to be out of production and only insert themselves in production when they have to. So whether or not you want to be completely out or want to insert yourself when you do, these are the phases you really go through. Phase one is proof production. And this is where you have to, the key thing here is you have to make peace with the salary, right? You have to pay yourself 50 grand or 75 grand or 100 grand, whatever it is that you want to pay yourself, and you just have to make peace with your salary. And then every other dollar that comes back into the organization, you have to reinvest. Right, you have to reinvest into your platform. You have to reinvest into per, into people. Right, you need money to invest to get to phase two. So phase one, which is proof production, which means that you can go out there and you can you can go out there and make money. Right, based on selling real estate or whatever business model that you're doing. You may even have an assistant here. You may have one buyer's agent. I'm not saying it's just you, but it's really like you're making money ultimately. But it's really just on you. And then you go to the next phase, which is phase two. And I want you to think of this as like that big blue thing right there is a bottle, a bo bottle, a, uh, a body of water. And uh, that, that um, brown is an actual bridge. So when you cross over from phase one to phase two, you're on the left side of the body of water, which is where you're kind of in this grind phase, which I showed you just a second ago from five to seven years to go from one side of phase two to the other side of phase two and get ultimately out of it. Because the hardest part is here is you still have to maintain production, folks, right? You still have to maintain your salary and money to reinvest and to make up for the mistakes that you're going to make, right? So you have to make up money for these mistakes that you're making, plus reinvest, plus figure out people, plus hire some people, which are going to turn out to be the wrong people, which you just lost some money in there, but you're gaining experiences here. That's why it takes five to seven years. So in this phase, you have to build a platform and invest people, and that's what gets you over the bridge. Instead of us trying to swim through this boat, right, and pull all this dead weight with us, you have to build a bridge, which is building your platform, right? And I'll get into that in a second, but that's ultimately in your mind, in phase two, you have to build a platform that you can springboard off like a trampoline that's going to hit your geometric growth. Remember, the only way you're going to hit a geometric curve is if you build an organization up that can sustain a geometric curve which means that you need money to invest, you need people, and you build your platform. But you're all doing this all while you're maintaining production, which is why it makes it very, very challenging, which is why I said going from a 5K to a half marathon or a marathon is going to be ultimately harder, but it's going to be much more rewarding, folks, much more rewarding. And that's what you're after. So that's phase two. And there's more to it, but I'm just going to a general overview because of time today. Phase three is ultimately freedom. And I like to uh, put it this way where your employees employ you, meaning that your people are paying you and, and the trusting of you of the money that they're making from the organization to reinvest back in the organization. You're leading your key people. You know, you're the CEO and the C stands for culture, which is you're creating that constant culture of the people that you hire, right? You're investing time into others, into yourself here. You're constantly growing, staying ahead of the curves, anticipating uphill battles that you're going to have. You can get all behind the team and start pushing forward. You're continually setting their vision and you're painting the clarity around these things. It's a key factor. So phase one is proof production. Phase two is the grind. Hardest phase and phase three is freedom. By the way, I, I said hardest phase in phase two and maybe the longest phase um ultimately until you get to phase three but they're all all three of them have their own different um challenges with them phase one is probably the easiest because you just it's your own energy right your own energy can create money and you've all figured that out phase two is you're kind of doing it with your own money but you're you're 
investing a lot of back in there, so it kind of feels different. You get to phase three, you're now now you're you're relying on everybody else. This is why your employees pay you because you're leading through them. You're not physically doing that to return in an investment on that, and that becomes its own challenge. All three are really fun to to go through. So I talked about before in the beginning of this is execution is key here. Right, genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. It just is, right? It's all about the execution, folks, of what you're gonna be able to do here. Execution is the key. So you heard me talk about in phase two about building a platform for success. Well, really that platform consists of a couple different things here. Fundamentally, it's models and systems. That structure equals your platform. Your models are your vision and belief systems. Your systems are how you execute on these things. By the way, um, and then structure of accountability tra coaching training. And what I was gonna say there is, the X factor to all of this, you can have the best systems, models, and vision, and structure, and coaching, but if you don't have the people to execute this, it doesn't matter what you have. That's why you need the best, their X factor for all of this. What makes your organization different than other people is the people that you hire, folks, and it's your duty to make sure you have the best people on here in order to build a team that continues to grow and grow itself, right? That's what it is. And again, we talked about that a second ago. Remember, you don't build a business, you build people, and then people build a business, right? One of the things I, I, um, uh, I read over from the Netflix book is it talks about how you actually don't empower people, you remind people that they have the power, and then you get the hell behind them and support them with tools, systems, models, vision, clarity. But you're giving, you're treating people like adults as long as they're the right people to go out there and have some freedom to empower, to power them up, to remind them they have this power to go out there and do these things, right? Because it's interesting in that book, they talk about the number one thing that really that people are looking for now is to be next to a kick butt team. They want people around them. And you think about when you love coming to work, you love coming to work because of the people that you're working with. That's your perk, not a foosball table or tennis court or dog friendly office or even money, which is, that's important too. But most importantly, it's the people that you work with. So focus on that when you're doing these things. It's, it's crucial, right? So what are we gonna cover in taking territory with teams, right? How to get out of production. We're gonna really dig deep into this, right? And I mean truly get out of production, not, and I'm gonna walk you through clarity models and systems of how we've been able to get people out of production over the last 10 years, right? Creating a path for freedom to execute. And again, if you wanna, if you want to um, be in production, you still can. I just wanna get you to a place where you can insert yourself where you want to. Stream time management on this, your ideal calendar, how to crush your goals, and how to execute on your goals. What does the team structure look like? What does the growth look like? The breakdown of the positions, your splits, compensation packages, and more, right? Your financial fundamentals, right? How do you manage cash flow? How do you get creative with money? How do you get creative with hiring people that are expensive? How, what to offer them, what not to offer them, or walk you through pitfalls that we've made, how not to. And then it's about operations, how to build a hub for ex exponential growth, right? So that you're, you can hit that springboard of how you're gonna be able to do that. And then one of the most important things is marketing and recruiting, because recruiting is people how to tell your story, how to attract talent. And I'm gonna give you some model systems that we've been using over the last 24 months that have helped our people uh, increase the number of agents. Uh, we, you know, we have almost as many people as most market centers do in HRG now, which is really cool. And it's because we keep pouring into the key people and attracting and telling our story. So we're gonna teach you how to do these things and models and systems and tools that are there uh, to be able to get people down. So um, it starts April 3rd, by the way, they're all gonna be recorded, there's six, weekly live webinars plus there's two bonus calls with some folks on our staff to give you some additional bonuses there um and then again you can have your entire team on there as well too so you guys can listen together or you can send the recording out afterwards so that if you're like me and you hear something and your team's not around you go try to implement it if it doesn't get anywhere so you can all be around together and this is designed for us to serve you to show that there's a model that lies between you know an individual agent and teams and brokerages and it's his ability to build a business inside real estate. I'm really excited and passionate about this. So hopefully you guys will join me on April 3rd. Look forward to having you guys there. You guys are awesome and have a wonderful day.